Guarded by Wanamaker with 10 seconds to go. Coombs McDaniel on the screen. Walker with seven. Got a mismatch. Walker on the game with four. Kemba Walker. Step back. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hoop Drunk, a March Madness podcast brought to you by Eagle Eye Sports. My name is Jake. I'm going to be hosting this over the next few weeks as we dive deeper and deeper into March Madness. A few things that I'm going to go through. I want to introduce myself a little bit for those of you that don't know me. Again, my name is Jake. I run Eagle Eye Sports Investing, which is an online sports consultant firm. Been going on for just over two years now. Started actually on Snapchat. Have evolved a little bit to Instagram as well as Twitter. Uh, A little bit on myself. I've been gambling semi-professionally, I guess is what we would call it, for the last five years. Over the last three years, it's gotten much more serious. In 19, I had a Vegas trip for the first week in a March Madness. That was the first time putting some serious money on games. Obviously, the next year in 2020, we get COVID. And last year, I had Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye was very, very successful in the first year of college basketball, uh, hitting well over 55%, as well as almost 30 units. So why college basketball was the question that a lot of people asked me. The sample size is huge. There's over 300 teams in Saturdays. We're going to have close to 150 Division I games. With the growing popularity of gambling, There's a lot of dumb money and advice going out there. So this season for me statistically has been okay. I'm hitting about 53%, which is exactly, you know, kind of the goal of what a handicapper should be going for. I think you become profitable around 52.5% on the season, 188, 164, and 3, up 21.22 units. Uh, Like I said, last college basketball season, and 56% up 28.99 units. And in March this year, kind of tracking March on its own, going to be, we are right now 14-9, and so 61%. Obviously, it's really early at plus 5.27 units. So as far as the podcast scheduling-wise, I plan to do this Monday through Friday here at least the next two weeks. Obviously, conference tournaments this week and then the actual tournament starting next week. I want to make sure that this is as informational as I can. I want it to be short and sweet. I don't want it to drown on. So the first thing I wanted to go through is my bankroll. I'm going to have some transparency with my bankroll because honestly, I don't care that I'm providing this to you guys. Uh, I'm not embarrassed by my bankroll at all. Uh, You know, I make around $100,000 a year, so it's not like I'm going to put crazy money on a game. I've changed how I've normally gone about it. Um, In the past, I've had $25 units, $50, hundred dollars it kind of depends how my sales job was going and it really affected how much i was putting gambling Um, to maximize the efficiency of my betting and provide some uniformity i've decided that i'm going to follow some of the experts in the industry um you know gino at bet openly is a good one uh my buddy over at pano picks another good one that have really you got to listen you know in this business it's a lot of listening and and learning from guys that have been in this in a long time so basically i'm going to be switching over to a percentage base betting i'm going to be working with a five thousand dollar bankroll it's completely separate from my day-to-day finances Uh, i'm very very well equipped to lose that five thousand however you'll see with the way that i'm betting it's going to be very very difficult to do so so one unit which is uh, uniform for most folks is fifty dollars two units hundred dollars so on so forth Um, This is a really good way to manage your bankroll. Like I said, it's going to make it very, very difficult to go broke, um, and it makes you stay betting within your means. So let's look at the week's outlook and a little bit of a recap over the weekend. We had three teams punch their ticket to the big dance. Murray State finished the season 30-2, won the Ohio Valley, but failed to cover in both of their tournament games. The Longwood Lancers won some money on them yesterday with a little bit of a sprinkle. They're headed to their first ever NCAA tournament after blowing out Winthrop in the Big South Championship. The last team to clinch was the Loyola Chicago Ramblers. They won the Missouri Valley Tournament as a four-seed, knocked off both three-seeded Drake and one-seeded Northern Iowa. So we will see Loyola Chicago back in the tournament again, which makes me happy being a Midwest guy. 
it's always cool seeing those smaller midway mid majors get in there so as we look forward towards the week so monday here today we only got 10 games to choose from and i'm being very picky i've got two games that i'm going to go through later that i'll go that i'll kind of get into a little bit more those are the only two that i really plan on betting hopefully the plan is wagering three to seven units per day throughout the month like i put in my notes here we'll see if that stays true Today we're going to get the semifinals in the Horizon League, WCC, Summit, and Colonial. We're also going to get the SOCON and Sunbelt Championships. Tomorrow we're going to pick up the American East and the MAAC. Wednesday, the madness really kicks off. All of the rest, except for the MAC and the Americans, start their conference tournaments. And then by Thursday, we're full blow, basically locked in till 5 o'clock Central on Selection Sunday. So let's get into today's bets. Like I said, it's going to be a shorter card with the short uh, slate that we have available. Game number one is going to be game number 880. It's Cleveland State versus Wright State in the Horizon League semifinal. From a bird's eye view, uh, the Vikings, they want to share the league title with IPFW. Wright State ended the season a game behind them, tied for third. The first matchup between these two was a 10-point victory for the Vikings at home. Second time around, both teams shot very poorly but Cleveland State was able to escape with a road victory. Now, in today's matchup, there are two things that stand out to me, and they both have to do with roster composition. Wright State's going to play six guys. It's a very, very tight rotation that they run over there. Unless somebody gets into foul trouble, there's really six, maybe seven guys that you'll see uh, get on the floor tonight. Out of those six, three guys are consistently looking for their shot. They've got three guys that really, really do want to be ball dominant it really comes down to two guys it's tanner holden and grant i believe it's bazil bazil um they run a little bit of iso ball so if they do kind of move into that look for the veteran viking group to openly switch on screens and don't let those two run freely uh cleveland state they found great depth they've got 12 seniors on the roster however obviously none of them play a lot of white guys sitting at the end of the bench type vibes when it comes to this group They started their careers at the bottom of the barrel in the horizon, and now they're 40 minutes from earning an opportunity to run back their 2021 title. I do like Cleveland State money line here. It's right around minus 115, minus 110 this morning. I think it was a pick 'em last night, so it's going to be teetering between you know one, one and a half there. I'm going to take money line for two units. In the second game for me today, it's going to be game 884, Chattanooga. Money line against Furman in the SoCon championship game. Again, from a bird's eye view, the mocks were outright winners of the SoCon regular season. They were 14-4. and four. Furman was a couple games behind them in the two spot. Chattanooga yesterday absolutely washed Wofford. Had a three-unit wager on them, which, as you'll come to see, is a pretty big wager for me. Um, they absolutely dominated them from start to finish. Furman almost saw their season slip away in the final seconds against Samford. Uh, in the two games against each other this season, the mocks were 2-0 and with a two-point win at home and a more recent six-point victory on the road. In today's matchup, it's pretty straightforward. For Furman to get into the dance, they need to win it outright. The mocks, they could get in an at-large bid, but they would... Oh, got my alarm going off. They could get in an at-large bid, but they don't want that to be the end-all, be-all. You don't want to put it in the committee's hands. You want to win this thing outright. Although the two games between the two were close, there's one stat that really stood out to me, and it's the rebounding. In Game 1, the Mox out-rebounded the Paladins by 10, which isn't super uncommon, but neither of them had a bad shooting game. In Game 2, Chattanooga not only out-round, out-rebounded them 35-23, to but they won the game on the road, shooting just 3 of 20 from 3. They trailed by 7 going into half and exploded in the second, outscoring them 44-31. to I talked about this when I bet the box yesterday. The roster composition is great. They're led by five seniors and the SoCon leading scorer in junior Malachi Smith. Smith had 25 points and 11 boards yesterday on 9, or nine of 14 shooting. One of the most gifted scorers in the country. He's super, super fluid. He's already got two 20-point performances against Furman under his belt this year. This is the kind of guy that is really going to make some noise here in the next 10 days. I like the Mox to win this one as a team. They walk like a tournament team, talk like a tournament team. To me, this is a tournament team. We're going to go one and a half units. Chattanooga money line sitting around minus 120. Got to pay a little bit of juice, but nothing too crazy. So kind of wrapping it up again, Chattanooga money line along with Cleveland State money line for the day. Uh, We'll be back at it again tomorrow bright and early with another episode. 
We get the championship for the Horizon WCC Summit and Colonial. Like I said, we're going to add the American East and the MAAC. Good luck with those two bets. We will see you guys tomorrow. Look at that. Less than 10 minutes. Gotta love it.